Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Section 1.9 is about reaction mechanisms. So English majors, eat your heart out. We're starting with a quote. Every long journey begins with a single step. That is going to be the key for this lesson. You're going to see why in a minute. You have been given sort of an incomplete picture of reactions over the course of your science. You've always been given reactants on one side and products on the other with one nice simple arrow in the middle. Fortunately, that's not even close to the full picture. You're going to learn a little bit more towards that full picture in the next seven minutes here. My little example, we have 23 reacting particles. There is no way that all 23 of these things with the right mole ratios can collide into each other in one step. All the right bonds form, all the right bonds break, and then they form the products. It's almost impossible. So almost every reaction on the planet takes place in a series of steps that leads you from the reactants to the products. There may be one kind of reaction, like this one, that has two ions smashing together. The chances of that taking place in one step is probable. So this one's happy. It can go into one step and um, no problem. But the majority of them are going to take place in a series of steps. And those series of steps are called mechanisms. So a couple little things here. You will never be asked to determine the entire mechanism. That's what PhD researchers do. What we're going to do is play around with a few characteristics of them and tie them into Chem 12. When you get to a second year organic class, you'll be doing your own mechanisms until your hands bleed, but that's for later. So here's a classic example. I, have to, I did not come up with this one, but it's in most textbooks. Here is the overall reaction. It's got the reactants and it's got the products. This does not take place in one step. It takes place in three steps. And those are the mechanisms, or those are the steps that make up the mechanism of that entire reaction. You'll see in the first step it is slow, in the second step it's a little faster, and in the third step it's even faster. You'll see that HBr and O2 make a Huber, and HBr and a Huber makes a couple of Hobers, and a couple of Hobers and an HBr makes those products. You're going to notice that there are a couple things that are the same on either side. That is what we are going to be dealing with in Chem 12. So, first little definition. Rate determining step. It can be short form to RDS. It is the slowest step in the mechanism. The entire mechanism will be controlled by that rate determining step. And the only way to speed up the mechanism is by speeding up the rate determining step. That is a great multiple choice upper level question. If you speed up any other step besides the rate determining step, it will have no effect on the overall rate. So what are we doing with this stuff? Well, first thing first is you're going to be given a series of steps like I have here, one, two, three, and you're going to be asked to come up with the overall reaction. And you do so by simply canceling off the things that are the same on either side. So there's a Huber on either side and a couple of Hobers on the either side. If they're the same on either side, you can cancel them off. It's kind of like combining reactions in like Math 11. You'll notice that there are now four HBrs, one O2, two H2Os, and two Brs. Whatever is left over after you cancel off creates the overall reaction. Okay, let's give that a try. Here's a couple of fake reactions, three steps with A's and X's. What can we cancel off? There's an AX2 there and an AX2 there. There's an AX there and an AX there. There's also an X there and an X there. So you can cancel them off any way that you like, but they have to be identical on either side. So what's left over? I've got, let me change colors. I've got an A and an A, so I've got two A's. I've got two X's, I have an A2 and an X2. So I canceled off the items that are on the same on either side, and then whatever I have left is my overall reaction. Okay, Why don't you guys give this one a shot? It's a little trickier. This is the little twist. In this example, I'm giving you step one, step two, and the overall you need to find step three. 
So what I recommend is you writing the overall reaction down there. Now what you have to do is look at the overall reaction and look at what's given in step one and step two and come up with what should be step three. The first thing I notice is that there are no C's in the overall. So we have to create something in step three that cancels off the C's. Well, C3's cancel off on their own. So let's cancel off the C plus four by adding a C plus four. And let's cancel off the C plus two by adding a C plus two. So very simply and quickly, we got rid of the C's. I also notice that there are no um, B's in the mechanism that's given. So we have to add those. The overall reaction needs a B plus three here and the overall reaction needs a B plus here. It looks like the A's gets, come on, here. the A's get uh, brought down there and there. The B plus comes down and the B plus three comes down. So think of these just as a puzzle, not as anything to do with Chem 12, okay? I'd like you to try this next one and we will um, also do it in class tomorrow. So one more little detail. What we have been canceling off and adding to create the overall equation are called reaction intermediates. Very important definition in chapter one. Reaction intermediates are formed in one step and used up in the other. Formed in one step and used up in the other. Those are the things that are actually canceled off. Reaction intermediates are not reactants, are not products of the overall reaction. They are just intermediates in the overall mechanism. So in that classic Huber-Hober example, the Hubers and the Hobers are the reaction intermediates. But there's one very, very important detail. Reaction intermediates are not activated complexes. Activated complex is still short-lived, temporary, unstable combination of reactants. It's a huge fluke if the formula for the activated complex equals the formula for the reaction intermediate. Okay, I will put this on a multiple choice question on every quiz and every test. Do not mix up the activated complexes and the reaction intermediates. You will have a chance to practice that tomorrow. Okay, that's my point right there. Big, big deal. An activated complex is unstable, short-lived. Okay, it is not a reaction intermediate. Okay? We will see everybody in class tomorrow.